Hey party people, what's going on? This is B. Dillinger. How are you? Welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making this asymmetrical clutch. So let me just show it to you. So it's long on one side, as I look. It's long on one side and short on the other, and then it folds over and has a zipper detail and also a tassel. So for this particular video, I just want to point out, I won't be demoing how you did the tassel because I've done it in a previous video. However, if you want me to post just a video on how I make tassels, just leave a comment down below in the comment section. This particular project is pretty straightforward. You do need a sewing machine, however, because there is a sewing straightforward. I think all of you guys can make it through no problem. There is a pattern making element to this video as I always do if you've been following my videos I always make patterns now if you're asking yourself well why do you always make patterns how come you can't just draw it on the fabric like a lot of other people do well it's because if I ever want to make it again or I've made something like this and I just want to make a small adjustment I can do that to the pattern fairly easily versus trying to work it out on a piece of fabric and that's just you know it's just one of my methods anyway so that's it let's get into the rest of the video So the first thing you want to do is you want to draft two patterns, one for the front and one for the back. Now if you're asking yourself, well, how come I can't just make one pattern? Well, when you're making an asymmetrical style, it's not the same on front and back because you have to flip it. So just trust me on this, make two patterns. Side bar. In general, I use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. However, use whatever you feel comfortable with. Next, cut out your pattern from your material. Here I've just folded it in half just to give you a sense of what it's going to look like when it's finished. And this is the lining. Okay, so what we're going to be working on now is how to make a zipper tunnel for the end of your zipper tab. Um, and this is just a technique that I use. So you, what I do is I just take a piece of, you know, um, of my material, whatever that is, and what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to make it the same width as the zipper. So in my case, my zipper is one and a quarter. And then I also make it the length of the zipper tab. So that would be um, another inch. Now, if you're wondering, maybe your zipper is a little bit longer or whatever, the whole idea is that um, if you want to bypass the stopper, that this is a way that you can cover that up and you know, longer zipper, you know, and you won't have to have that custom cut. Now, normally when I do this particular technique, you know, I, when we're in the sewing process, I would, once the piece is cut down, this is too big, but once the piece is cut down, I would sew it from this side and then flip it over. But because my material for this particular clutch is so thick, um, I don't think that it's a good idea to use it like if you can see that I think you can see that's too much bulk for going into a two sides so I'm gonna actually do mine flat and wait let's get into um, getting this thing attached end of the zipper tab okay so now let's just double check it <clears throat> so you just want to make sure that your tab lines up with the edge of your bag right edge of your clutch and then the top of your zipper tape I think you guys this is because my leather or my material is so thick I'm just gonna sew the raw edge directly on top that way what I normally would do if the material was soft enough, I would have, you know, folded it and sewn it. But, you know, as I said, my, the material that I'm using is just, you know, way too thick for that. I don't think you're going to get like a nice clean edge. So I'm actually going to be sewing my raw wood folded back. Now, as a pro tip, if you guys can see on your zipper, see how the zipper, and let's see if you guys can see this, um, there are these different grooves on your zipper. So in order to set my zipper straight, what I always do is I line my material right up with the edge of one of these. And you just want to make sure that whatever you're choosing 
you know, gives you enough for your zipper <clears throat> to clear. To set my zipper to keep it from moving around, I'm going to be using a product called Heat and Bond. Next, all I'm doing is I'm just lining everything up. So lining up the front, lining up the back, making sure it's even with the tab, getting everything adjusted to make sure that when I take it to the sewing machine, I'm good to go. Next, I want to top stitch the zipper to the front and the back pieces. I did use a pop color for this, which is orange, but you guys use whatever you want. It's just up to you, it's a design element. So here, I'm just double checking to make sure that the zipper functions properly. If you find that your zipper is sticking a little bit, like maybe it's getting caught on the teeth, you can add a little bit of beeswax to the teeth. Make sure that you leave the zipper partially open or at least big enough for you to be able to put your hand inside so that when you turn it inside out, you'll be able to do that. Sidebar, if you want a tassel, you must create a tab at this time and insert it into the side seam. I won't be able to tell you exact dimensions for that because it really depends on the hardware you choose. Now I've turned the bag inside out. So now if you notice, the corners aren't exactly, mm, they don't look that great. So I'm actually gonna use a tool called a bone folder to basically poke into those corners and give them a better shape. Whenever I pin, I pin with the head facing in and the pointy side facing out. And what I do is I just go under where I'm gonna be sewing a little bit and then up a little bit. You can remove the pins if you want, but in general, I usually just sew over the pins. Let's sew the lining. So you sew the fronts, the backs, you sew the two sides and the bottom. So here's another place where I'm going to be using the heat and bond. So I applied the heat bond to the edge of the lining and then ironed it on as per the directions. Then of course you peel it off. Then once I have the peel off, it's kind of sticking there as you'll see if, you use heat, if you've ever used heat and bond before. The lining back into the clutch and then ironing it again to set it. So next, you want to drop in your lining and then match it up with the grooves, you know, as I said before, with your zipper teeth. Because we've made that zipper tunnel, you'll need to push the lining in just a little bit underneath the zipper stop. So for some reason, mine had a small little hole on the side, so I'm just going to do a little repair work using the pop color orange stitch. Sewing through the leather was really tough, so I'm using this pair of pliers along with Glover's needles, which are appropriate for leather use, in order to puncture the leather. Well, that's it for today's tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for taking on this project. If you did happen to make one and you would like me to see it, because I would like to see it, please do tag me on Instagram. You can find me at Blackbird Dillinger and all the information you know, on how to find me or reach me, you can find down below in the description box. Anyway, As always, I have you know a bunch of stuff planned, a bunch of content coming, so please make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a minute of the different things that I'm going to be working on because for spring, summer, I'm actually planning on coordinating a bunch of different accessories together so that you have some really cool and amazing things to rock this summer. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you back success, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.